In quantum mechanics, the spin statistics theorem relates the intrinsic spin of a particle angular momentum not due to the orbital motion to the particle statistics it obeys. In units of the reduced Planck constant h, all particles that move in three dimensions have either integer spin or half integer spin. Topic <laughs> Background. Topic <laughs> <laughs> Quantum states and indistinguishable particles. In a quantum system, a physical state is described by a state vector. A pair of distinct occupying separate points state vectors are physically equivalent if their absolute value is equal, ignoring other interactions. A pair of indistinguishable particles such as this have only one state. This means that if the positions of the particles are exchanged i.e., they undergo a permutation, this does not identify a new physical state, but rather one matching the original physical state. In fact, one cannot tell which particle is in which position. While the physical state does not change under the exchange of the particle's positions, it is possible for the state vector to be negated as a result of an exchange. Since this does not change the absolute value of the state vector, this negation does not affect the physical state. The essential ingredient in proving the spin – statistics relation is relativity, that the physical laws do not change under Lorentz transformations. The field operators transform under Lorentz transformations according to the spin of the particle that they create, by definition. Additionally, the assumption known as microcausality that space-like separated fields either commute or anticommute can be made only for relativistic theories with a time direction. Otherwise, the notion of being space-like is meaningless. However, the proof involves looking at a Euclidean version of spacetime, in which the time direction is treated as a spatial one, as will be now explained. Lorentz transformations include three-dimensional rotations as well as boosts. A boost transfers to a frame of reference with a different velocity, and is mathematically like a rotation into time. By analytic continuation of the correlation functions of a quantum field theory, the time coordinate may become imaginary, and then boosts become rotations. The new space-time has only spatial directions and is termed Euclidean. Topic. Exchange symmetry Bosons are particles whose wave function is symmetric under such an exchange or permutation, so if we swap the particles the wave function does not change. Fermions are particles whose wave function is antisymmetric, so under such a swap the wave function gets a minus sign, meaning that the amplitude for two identical fermions to occupy the same state must be zero. This is the Pauli exclusion principle, two identical fermions cannot occupy the same state. This rule does not hold for bosons. In quantum field theory, a state or a wave function is described by field operators operating on some basic state called the vacuum. In order for the operators to project out the symmetric or antisymmetric component of the creating wave function, they must have the appropriate commutation law. The operator Psi x y phi x phi y d x d y display style i i n t psi x y phi x phi y d x d y with phi display style phi an operator and psi x y display style psi x y a numerical function creates a two particle state with wave function psi x y display style psi x y and depending on the commutation properties of the fields, either only the antisymmetric parts or the symmetric parts matter. Let us assume that x does not equal 
y display style x neq y and the two operators take place at the same time more generally they may have space like separation as is explained hereafter if the fields commute meaning that the following holds phi x phi y equals phi y phi x display style phi x phi y equals phi y phi x then only the symmetric part of psi display style psi contributes so that psi x y equals psi y x display style psi x y equals psi y x and the field will create bosonic particles on the other hand if the fields anti commute meaning that phi display style phi has the property that phi x phi y equals minus phi y phi x display style phi x phi y equals phi y phi x then only the anti symmetric part of psi display style psi contributes so that psi x y equals minus psi y x display style psi x y equals psi y x and the particles will be fermionic Naively, neither has anything to do with the spin, which determines the rotation properties of the particles, not the exchange properties. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Spin statistics relation. The spin statistics relation was first formulated in 1939 by Marcus Fiertz and was rederived in a more systematic way by Wolfgang Pauli. Fiertz and Pauli argued their result by enumerating all free field theories subject to the requirement that there be quadratic forms for locally commuting observables including a positive definite energy density. A more conceptual argument was provided by Julian Schwinger in 1950. Richard Feynman gave a demonstration by demanding unitarity for scattering as an external potential is varied, which when translated to field language is a condition on the quadratic operator that couples to the potential. <laughs> theorem statement The theorem states that the wave function of a system of identical integer spin particles has the same value when the positions of any two particles are swapped. Particles with wave functions symmetric under exchange are called bosons. The wave function of a system of identical half-integer spin particles changes sign when two particles are swapped. Particles with wave functions anti-symmetric under exchange are called fermions. In other words, the spin statistics theorem states that integer spin particles are bosons, while half-integer spin particles are fermions. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> General discussion. Topic: <laughs> A suggestive bogus argument Consider the two field operator product R Pi Phi X Phi minus X Display style R Pi Phi X Phi X where R is the matrix that rotates the spin polarization of the field by 180 degrees when one does a 180 degree rotation around some particular axis. The components of phi are not shown in this notation 
phi display style phi has many components and the matrix R mixes them up with one another in a non-relativistic theory this product can be interpreted as annihilating two particles at positions x display style x and minus x display style x with polarizations that are rotated by pi display style pi relative to each other now rotate this configuration by pi display style pi around the origin under this rotation the two points x display style x and minus x display style x switch places and the two field polarizations are additionally rotated by a pi display style pi so we get r 2 pi phi minus x r pi phi x display style r 2 pi phi x r pi phi x which for integer spin is equal to phi minus x r pi phi x display style phi x r pi phi x and for half integer spin is equal to minus phi minus x r pi phi x display style phi x r pi phi x proved at spin physics section rotations both the operators plus or minus phi minus x r pi Phi x display style pm phi x r pi phi x still annihilate two particles at x display style x and minus x display style x. Hence, we claim to have shown that, with respect to particle states, r pi phi x phi minus x equals phi minus x r pi phi x for integral spins, minus phi minus x r pi phi x for half integral spins. Display style r pi phi x phi x equals begin cases phi x r pi phi x and text for integral spins phi x r pi phi x and text for half integral spins end cases so exchanging the order of two appropriately polarized operator insertions into the vacuum can be done by a rotation at the cost of a sign in the half integer case this argument by itself does not prove anything like the spin statistics relation to see why consider a non-relativistic spin zero field described by a free schrodinger equation such a field can be anti-commuting or commuting to see where it fails, consider that a non-relativistic spin zero field has no polarization, so that the product above is simply phi minus x phi x. Display style phi x phi x. In the non-relativistic theory, this product annihilates two particles at x. Display style x and minus x display style x and has zero expectation value in any state in order to have a non-zero matrix element this operator product must be between states with two more particles on the right than on the left 0 phi minus x phi x psi Display style Langle zero phi x phi x psi wrangle. Performing the rotation, all that we learn is that rotating the two-particle state psi 
Display style psi wrangle gives the same sign as changing the operator order. This gives no additional information, so this argument does not prove anything. Topic: <laughs> Why the bogus argument fails. To prove the spin statistics theorem, it is necessary to use relativity, as is obvious from the consistency of the non-relativistic spinless fermion, and the non-relativistic spinning bosons. There are claims in the literature of proofs of the spin statistics theorem that do not require relativity, but they are not proofs of a theorem, as the counterexamples show, rather they are arguments for why spin statistics is «natural», while wrong statistics is «unnatural». In relativity, the connection is required. In relativity, there are no local fields that are pure creation operators or annihilation operators. Every local field both creates particles and annihilates the corresponding antiparticle. This means that in relativity, the product of the free real spin zero field has a non-zero vacuum expectation value, because in addition to creating particles which are not annihilated and annihilating particles which are not subsequently created, it also includes a part that creates and annihilates virtual particles whose existence enters into interaction calculations, but never as scattering matrix indices or asymptotic states. G X equals zero phi minus x phi x zero display style g x equals langle zero phi x phi x zero wrangle, and now the heuristic argument can be used to see that g x display style G X is equal to G minus X display style G X which tells us that the fields cannot be anti-commuting topic proof A pi rotation in the Euclidean xt plane can be used to rotate vacuum expectation values of the field product of the previous section. The time rotation turns the argument of the previous section into the spin statistics theorem. The proof requires the following assumptions The theory has a Lorentz invariant Lagrangian. The vacuum is Lorentz invariant. The particle is a localized excitation. Microscopically, it is not attached to a string or domain wall. The particle is propagating, meaning that it has a finite, not infinite, mass. The particle is a real excitation, meaning that states containing this particle have a positive definite norm. These assumptions are for the most part necessary, as the following examples show. The spinless anticommuting field shows that spinless fermions are non relativistically consistent. Likewise, the theory of a spinner commuting field shows that spinning bosons are two. This assumption may be weakened. In two plus one dimensions, sources for the Chern Simons theory can have exotic spins, despite the fact that the three dimensional rotation group has only integer and half integer spin representations. An ultralocal field can have either statistics independently of its spin. This is related to Lorentz invariance, since an infinitely massive particle is always non-relativistic, and the spin decouples from the dynamics. Although colored quarks are attached to a QCD string and have infinite mass, the spin statistics relation for quarks can be proved in the short distance limit. Gauge ghosts are spinless fermions, but they include states of negative norm. Assumptions 1 and 2 imply that the theory is described by a path integral, and assumption 3 implies that there is a local field which creates the particle. The rotation plane includes time, and a rotation in a plane involving time in the Euclidean theory defines a CPT transformation in the Minkowski theory. If the theory is described by a path integral, a CPT transformation takes states to their conjugates, so that the correlation function 0 r phi x 
phi minus x zero display style angle zero r phi x phi x zero wrangle must be positive definite at x equals zero by assumption five. The particle states have positive norm. The assumption of finite mass implies that this correlation function is non-zero for x spacelike. Lorentz invariance now allows the fields to be rotated inside the correlation function in the manner of the argument of the previous section. Zero R R Phi X R Phi minus X zero equals plus or minus zero Phi minus X R Phi X zero Display style Langle zero R Phi X R Phi X zero Wrangle equals PM Langle zero Phi X R Phi X zero Wrangle Where the sign depends on the spin, as before. The CPT invariance, or Euclidean rotational invariance, of the correlation function guarantees that this is equal to G X. So zero R Phi X Phi Y minus Phi Y R Phi X zero equals zero Display style Langle zero R Phi X Phi Y Phi Y R Phi X zero Wrangle equals zero for integer spin fields and zero R Phi X Phi Y plus Phi Y R Phi X zero equals zero Display style Langle zero R Phi X Phi Y plus Phi Y R Phi X zero Wrangle equals zero for half integer spin fields. Since the operators are space like separated, a different order can only create states that differ by a phase. The argument fixes the phase to be minus one or one according to the spin. Since it is possible to rotate the space like separated polarizations independently by local perturbations, the phase should not depend on the polarization in appropriately chosen field coordinates. This argument is due to Julian Schwinger. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Consequences. Topic: Fermionic fields. The spin statistics theorem implies that half-integer spin particles are subject to the Pauli exclusion principle, while integer spin particles are not. Only one fermion can occupy a given quantum state at any time, while the number of bosons that can occupy a quantum state is not restricted. The basic building blocks of matter such as protons, neutrons, and electrons are fermions. Particles such as the photon, which mediate forces between matter particles, are bosons. The Fermi-Dirac distribution describing fermions leads to interesting properties. Since only one fermion can occupy a given quantum state, the lowest single particle energy level for spin minus one half fermions contains at most two particles, with the spins of the particles oppositely aligned. Thus, even at absolute zero, a system of more than two fermions in this case still has a significant amount of energy. As a result, such a fermionic system exerts an outward pressure. Even at non-zero temperatures, such a pressure can exist. This degeneracy pressure is responsible for keeping certain massive stars from collapsing due to gravity. See white dwarf, neutron star, and black hole. Topic: 
Bosonic fields There are a couple of interesting phenomena arising from the two types of statistics. The Bose–Einstein distribution which describes bosons leads to Bose–Einstein condensation. Below a certain temperature, most of the particles in a bosonic system will occupy the ground state the state of lowest energy. Unusual properties such as superfluidity can result. Ghost fields Ghost fields do not obey the spin statistics relation. See Klein transformation on how to patch up a loophole in the theorem. <laughs> relation to representation theory of the Lorentz group The Lorentz group has no non-trivial unitary representations of finite dimension. Thus it seems impossible to construct a Hilbert space in which all states have finite, non-zero spin and positive, Lorentz invariant norm. This problem is overcome in different ways depending on particle spin statistics. For a state of integer spin the negative norm states known as unphysical polarization are set to zero, which makes the use of gauge symmetry necessary. For a state of half-integer spin the argument can be circumvented by having fermionic statistics. <laughs> <laughs> Limitations, anions in two dimensions In 1982, physicist Frank Wilczek published a research paper on the possibilities of possible fractional spin particles, which he termed anions from their ability to take on any spin. He wrote that they were theoretically predicted to arise in low-dimensional systems where motion is restricted to fewer than three spatial dimensions. Wilczek described their spin statistics as interpolating continuously between the usual boson and fermion cases." Evidence for the existence of anions has been presented experimentally from 1985 through 2013, although it is not considered definitively established that all proposed kinds of anions exist. Anions are related to Braid symmetry and topological states of matter. See also Parastatistics Enionic statistics Braid statistics Notes <laughs> <laughs>